happy afternoon or very good afternoon. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, a quick nod whether I am audible and visible. Hi, I, I believe that I'm audible and visible. So yes, uh, welcome to the today's YouTube live session, which is uh, episode five in the series of most expected uh, MCQs that we are doing for the upcoming FMG exam. And these sessions are important for the NIC PG exam as well, because the topics are basically the same. Right, and in these sessions, we learn the skills on how to apply our knowledge, whatever we have read to the MCQs, you know, what are the tricks, uh, how we do eliminate the options and all of that. So basically, this is episode 5. We have had other sessions also in the past. Uh, right. Uh, so today in this session, we have a mixed bag MCQs. So it's not limited to one subject. It is mixed bag MCQs that we have for today. Now, uh, about the updates uh, on the platform, what's happening is, so now you have 20% off on all the NEAT PG and Academy store subscriptions. What do we mean by store and academy store is you can subscribe, you can take admission to a particular batch like without subscribing to the entire platform. So let's say that you are a FMT student and you are you just started preparation after the date is declared. So uh, what do we have is you can just subscribe to this FMG batch uh, at a price of 4.4k uh, with the ongoing 20% off. You need to use a code, Dr. Nikita is a code that you can use. Similarly, for the students preparing for the NEET PG exam, the next exam, uh, you can take this course now with the 20% off at approximately 9,600. Again, you need to use a code and this offer is only for a limited time. That is from 22nd, that is today to 26th of May. So this is the target FMG batch which I was talking about which is available on the store. You will see it separately in the store. And uh, this is now available at 4.4k. You have everything in this uh, course that is available for your exam. And we also have the live course uh, that is we have started on, uh, that will be starting on May 25th for the NEET PG students. Right, so you have the best of the educators in their respective subjects will be taking their respective subjects in this course. So this also you can uh, subscribe to specifically. Uh, like, you know, this is the one course that I want to do. You can subscribe at this price. All right, so starting with the today's questions, this is the first question to begin with. This is easy one, but yes, this is very, very important. Right, so what will be the answer to this question? Very good, absolutely right. So this is uh, going to be Papillary thyroid cancer, even if you are not able to identify from the image, read the question. It is already mentioning that there is orphan any eye nucleus. It's already mentioned. This is where you see the orphan any eye uh, nuclear valises, right? So where do you see orphan any? This is seen in a papillary carcinoma. So how do you remember this is? So remember this basically as... So remember it as what do we have is papillary is papa, orphan. So basically an orphan with the mama, okay, mama and papa. So what does that stand for? Orphan any eye nucleus, mama is samoma, okay. Mama is basically samoma bodies are seen and papa is papillary carcinoma, okay. That's a trick to be remembered here. So remember that orphan, mama and papa. That is orphan, samoma and we have the papillary, papa is the papillary carcinoma. Okay, now some important points about the thyroid cancer here, what you need to remember is follicular thyroid cancer will develop when a patient has long standing goiter. What cancer develops? It is follicular thyroid cancer. When there is a history of irradiation, what cancer risk? It is papillary carcinoma. For medullary thyroid cancer, remember med is men. 
So this is the component of which main syndrome? MEN2 syndrome. Okay, that is your MEN2 syndrome where you have medullary thyroid cancer. Which of these is also called as has the presentation of lateral aberrant thyroid. Lateral aberrant thyroid is the term related to papillary carcinoma. So in papillary carcinoma, the, what is the spread that we have? It is the lymphatic spread. Okay, it is the lymphatic spread that we see. So we see big, big lymph nodes in papillary thyroid and it is called as lateral aberrant thyroid. Okay, it is called as lateral aberrant thyroid. Okay, clear with everyone? So this is uh, basically about your uh, papillary, remember orphan, any uh, nucleus, radiation associated and saboma bodies. Going on to the next question, which of the following amino acids are required for formation of nitric oxide in the blood vessels? Which of the following amino acids are required for the formation of nitric oxide in the blood vessels? Very good. It is arginine. Very, very important. Arginine is required for nitric oxide. So if you see NINI, it has two NINI. So remember for nitric oxide, it is NINI wala, which is, uh, which is uh, arginine. Nitric oxide is arginine. Okay. Can you tell me other products from arginine apart from nitric oxide? What are the other products from arginine? What are the other products that are formed from arginine? One is nitric oxide. What else? Arginine is also required for? Remember the arginase, arginase enzyme which is required for urea formation. The last step. That is arginase and that is uh, urea formation and arginine is also required for creatine formation. Remember for creatine the mnemonic is MAG, create magnificent results. So MAG, methionine, arginine and you have glycine which is required for, uh, okay, which is, these are the amino acids required for creatine. So look at this one, arginine is required for creatine, for urea and for nitric oxide. And remember that out of this, the BH4, what does BH4 stand for? Tetrahydrobiopterin. Tetrahydrobiopterin is required for uh, nitric oxide synthesis and also for the aromatic amino acid hydroxylase enzyme. Right, tryptophan hydroxylase, tyrosine hydroxylase, phenylalanine hydroxylase, all these enzymes require, all these enzymes require tetrahydrobiopterin. Okay. Clear with everyone? Let's go to the next question. What do you think would be the answer to this one? A man was admitted, uh, his friend saw him lying, snake passing and the patient died. What is the probable cause of death? So remember the trick here. When you have lengthy question, whenever you have lengthy question, Read the last line first. Okay, that's the trick that you should be using. That saves a lot of time. Is it shock or is it respiratory paralysis? Absolutely right. It is respiratory paralysis. Why is this respiratory paralysis? Because look at the snake. What is the snake which is shown here? Is it cobra? Is it viper? Is it crate? What snake is this? Yes. Very good. This is a crate. So how do we remember that this is a uh, this is a crate by looking at the straight bands. Okay, by looking at the straight bands. So remember, crate has straight bands. Okay, crate has a straight bands. Crate is straight. So that is why this is a crate. And remember the cur cur cur. If I write it as crate, it is cobra. These are neurotoxic. So remember the CCC here. That is crate and cobra are neurotoxic. And that is why this will cause respiratory paralysis. Okay, this will cause respiratory paralysis. If I talk about the rest of them, what is the other toxicities with the rest of the snakes? So remember that viper. What is the toxicity with viper? Viper causes what toxicity? 
Remember V for V. Viper is vasculotoxic that is hemotoxic. Viper is vasculotoxic that is hemotoxic. Right. Sea snake is what toxicity do we have with sea snake? Now sea snake when we go to the sea swimming ke baad we get a lot of muscle ache. Right. A lot of muscle ache. So remember it is myotoxic okay it is myotoxic so viper is vascular toxic sea snake is uh, myotoxic and the ccc cobra crate are neurotoxic okay cobra and crate are neurotoxic clear with everyone the various toxicities of the snake right and one of the recent uh, question in your inict exam what was the question in the inict this inict exam the right wala scheme okay for treating the patient with a snake bite okay so remember i stands for what does the i stand for in the right technique right is i stands for immobilization not incision that is what the question for i stands for immobilization not incision okay so look at the snakes here quickly how do we identify the snakes this one we said that the one which has the straight bands that is the crate Remember viper V and V. So the diamond shape that you have that is the viper. Okay the diamond shape basically that would be the viper which is Sida V and Ulta V. And the one which has the hood which is present. Right. The presence of hood tells you that it's a cobra. And the hood wala is cobra. The one which has a spectacle mark. Who wears the spectacle? Common man wears the spectacle. King does not wear the spectacle. Common man wears the spectacle. So remember king cobra and common cobra. And you have the viper and you have the crate. Okay. Going on to the next one. Which anesthetic agent is contraindicated in acute intermittent porphyria? Which anesthetic agent is contraindicated in acute intermittent porphyria? Why majority of you are saying ketamine or propofol? Why ketamine? Right. The correct answer is thiopentone. Why? Because thiopentone basically is a barbiturate. And barbiturates are contraindicated in porphyrias. Why? Since the barbiturates are cytochrome P enzyme inducers. Right. Cytochrome P3A4, the enzyme inducers. By causing the enzyme induction... When you are inducing cytochrome, this cytochrome also is a heme containing compound. Heme containing one is hemoglobin and it's also in cytochrome. So when you are inducing the cytochrome, that will increase the production of the heme as well. So increased heme production basically will precipitate the porphyria acute attack. Right? It will precipitate the porphyria acute attack because you need increased heme for the cytochrome. So that is why the barbiturates are contraindicated in acute intermittent porphyria. And tell me about acute intermittent porphyria. Does it have neurovisceral symptoms? Does it have photosensitivity? Does it have both or does it have none? What do you have in acute intermittent porphyria? Yes. So very very important. Remember that in acute intermittent porphyria there is no photosensitivity which is there. It's a neurovisceral porphyria. Okay, there are only neurovisceral features. There are no there is no photosensitivity in acute intermittent porphyria. The neurovisceral basically means the psychiatric features plus there is abdominal pain that the patient has. Most common sign is uh, tachycardia which is present, right? Abdominal pain, a young female presenting with acute abdominal pain, psychiatric features, you should think about porphyria, okay? You should think about porphyria there. So porphyria is an important topic and we have taken it in the past in detail with all the mnemonics, okay? Next one, which type of joint is present at the arrow mark? Where is the arrow mark? This is the arrow mark. What will be the answer to this? 
So this has been asked in the previous FMG exam so many times. So the joint here basically is pubic symphysis and pubic symphysis is a secondary cartilaginous joint. All the joints in the midline, the midline joints are basically secondary cartilaginous joints or as the term says pubic symphysis, it is a symphysis. So even the intervertebral joints, okay, they are in the midline of the body, they are uh, secondary cartilaginous joints. So remember that this is a secondary cartilaginous joint. If I ask you a question, the joint at the growth plate of the bone between the epiphysis and the metaphysis of the bone, what type of joint is that? That is the primary cartilaginous joint. Okay, that does not allow any movement. Primary cartilaginous, secondary cartilaginous allows some movement. Okay, at secondary cartilaginous, you have the fibrocartilage which is present. Okay, you have the fibrocartilage which is present. Next question, what do you think would be the answer to this one? Yes, the most important clue here is the smell of burnt sugar in the urine. So remember that burnt sugar, sugar is present in syrup, right? Syrup, the way of sugar, so they are sweet. So remember that the sugar is the maple syrup urine disease. Okay, that is the maple syrup urine disease, MSUD, which is basically because of, what is MSUD? Because of the deficiency of? B, C, K, D. So, four letters, four letters. M, S, U, D is B, C, K, D. That is branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase enzyme. Right. So, and which are the branch chain amino acids? Which amino acids are the branch chain amino acids? Yes, absolutely right. So, remember we have a maple tree. A tree has a lot of branches. So remember that in the maple one, we have the branch which is affected. And when we live, we branch out. Right? So basically the mnemonic for the branch chain amino acids, it is live. When we are live, that means when we live, we branch out into multiple generations. So LIV, that is leucine, isoleucine and valine, these are the amino acids and these are the ones that should be restricted in the diet okay leucine isoleucine and valine not lysine what vitamin supplementation do we generally give in the treatment the branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase like pyruvate dehydrogenase alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase requires five coenzymes tlc fn tender loving care for ninjas so the vitamin is the thymine that is b1 is the supplementation that we need in these patients b1 supplementation helps in this patients. So remember this is branch chain because this is MSUD, the maple syrup is the burnt sugar odor. Okay. Clear with everyone? That is about this question. Going on to the next question now. So the main clue here is the child also has lactic acidosis ketosis and xanthomas on the buttocks lactic acidosis ketosis and xanthomas on the buttocks very good that is glucose 6 phosphatase because these words the lactic acidosis ketosis xanthomas and hypoglycemia in between feeding especially that means fasting hypoglycemia tells you that this is a diagnosis of Von Gerke's disease. Now, Von Gerke's is your type 1 glycogen storage disorder. Von is 1. 1 is 1. And the enzyme deficient is glucose 6-phosphatase. So, because this glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme is common to both uh, gluconeogenesis and glycogenesis, glycogenolysis. Because this is the enzyme common to both, that is gluconeogenesis and also glycogenolysis. So both of them are affected and that is why there is very severe fasting hypoglycemia. Okay, that's the reason we have severe fasting hypoglycemia. 
and there are other features right we call the doll fasces is what we get okay doll fasces uh because of the hyperlipidemia the fat deposition there is ketosis also there is lactic acidosis also plus you have increased uric acid as well in von gerke's disease so remember it is glucose 6 phosphatase it is glucose 6 phosphatase now one of the question asked in the recent neat pg exam that is neat pg 23 exam was ye glycogen synthase wala kaun sa hota hai this is type 0 glycogen storage disorder glycogen synthase that means the glycogen will be absent here okay the glycogen will be absent here the problem is with the synthesis of the glycogen branching enzyme a b c d branching is andersen's disease okay andersen where we have liver cirrhosis so that is uh, basically about your von gerke's disease glycogen storage disorders is very very important topic for your exam next one central venous pressure is increased in which type of shock central venous pressure is increased in which type of shock yes absolutely right that is cardiogenic shock or obstructive shock as well because with the cardiogenic shock what do we understand is with the cardiogenic that means the heart failing so the back pressure will go to the veins and that is why the venous pressure will increase because of the back pressure because of the heart failure the back pressure will lead to the increase in the jvp what do you see in neurogenic shock hypertension bradycardia hypertension tachycardia hypertension bradycardia what do you have in neurogenic shock yes so in neurogenic shock basically remember that there is loss of the sympathetic tone so it's all the parasympathetic which is there so parasympathetic system which is there parasympathetic causes hypotension and bradycardia very very important in neurogenic shock we have hypotension and bradycardia which is present it is hypotension and bradycardia okay so look at this one cardiogenic shock uh, cardiogenic shock there is hypotension there is tachycardia and this will have the raised jvp okay the systemic vascular resistance will be increased in neurogenic shock it is hypotension bradycardia with what kind of skin do we have warm dry skin okay it's a warm skin basically because of the vasodilatation which happens there so it's a warm dry skin that we have in neurogenic shock in septic shock there is warm flushed skin okay there is warm flushed skin in septic shock okay so remember the types of shock are very very important uh, okay so neurogenic is asked very frequently it's hypotension and bradycardia next one what do you think is the t stage of the breast cancer right read the last line that helps you answer the questions very fast what is the t stage of the breast cancer patient that is shown here right it is t4b why is it t4b because you can see the appearance of the breast here which is pure d or rang appearance of the breast that we are seeing here because of the involvement of the subdermal lymphatics so this is basically the involvement of the skin skin involvement so in the breast cancer the t4 stage is basically any size and you have a b c and you have d okay what is t4 a remember a matlab andar ki taraf that means the chest wall involvement breast ke andar the breast cancer is going inside that is the chest wall b matlab bahar aana bahar aana matlab involving the skin and c matlab combined that is both andar and bahar and d matlab dangerous the one which is very fast growing that is the inflammatory cancer okay that's the inflammatory cancer 
सो रिमेम्बर दैट ए मतलब अंदर बी मतलब बाहर सो ए अंदर इज टेस्ट वॉल बी बाहर इज स्किन सी इज कंबाइन एंड डी इज डेंजरस दैट मीन्स द इन्फ्लेमेटरी कैंसर ना बिकॉज दिस इज टेलिंग यू द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ द स्किन एंड दैट इज वाई दिस इज टी फोर बी दैट इज बाहर ओके दैट इज टी फोर बी ओके क्लियर विद एवरी वन अबाउट द प्यूटी और रॉन्ग अपियरेंस रिमेंबर दैट डिम्पलिंग एंड अट्रैक्शन इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन योर यू नो दैट डज नॉट चेंज द स्टेज ऑफ द कैंसर द डिम्पलिंग एंड द रिट्रैक्शन सो दिस इज योर टी फोर बेसिकली ट्यूमर ऑफ एनी साइज and uh, the chest wall is t4a under b matlab basically satellite nodules edema that includes a pudi orang appearance and c is both and d is inflammatory carcinoma next one what do you think would be the answer to this one now a 47 year old male presents with persistent vomiting he is a known case of gastric outlet obstruction what will be the acid base imbalance there is persistent vomiting here yes absolutely right there will be metabolic alkalosis because what happens with vomiting with vomiting the acid from the stomach goes out if the acid goes out so basically there is increased alkali that means there is going to be alkalosis if that is alkalosis this is not a lung disorder this is so this is metabolic as alkalosis okay so it will be metabolic alkalosis that means the ph will increase so tell me that how would be the bicarbonate the bicarbonate will be less or the bicarbonate will be high bicarbonate decreased or bicarbonate increased and what happens to the pco2 also bicarbonate pco2 increased or decreased yes so bicarbonate is increased and for compensation the pco2 also increases remember all increases so in any metabolic disorder remember the mnemonic rome metabolic is equal okay metabolic is equal that means all of them they go in the same direction all increase or all decrease so if the ph is increasing the bicarbonate also increasing the pco2 also increasing so basically it is all increasing okay so basically it is all increasing so that is for metabolic alkalosis uh what says tell me what does diarrhea cause what does diarrhea cause just give me a minute What does the diarrhea cause, guys? Yes, diarrhea is an example of metabolic acidosis. The alkali going out, the bicarbonate going out, and very very important. Remember that this is an example of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Right, the diarrhea causes normal anion gap. metabolic acidosis what other thing causes normal anion gap the renal tubular acidosis as well so be it the gi diarrhea or the renal diarrhea that is the renal tubular acidosis both of them they cause normal anion gap acidosis okay both of them cause normal anion gap acidosis okay yes so those were about the questions for today let us quickly try to revise the questions here and quickly revise the important points here so the first one orphan is mama and papa so orphan any i along with mama that is samoma bodies is seen in papillary cancer of thyroid then we saw that arginine is required for nitric oxide arginine is also required for urea and creatine formation and then we saw the next question the straight is crate rhyming word straight is crate it is crate here and remember that uh, crate k k k crate cobra is cns neurotoxic c c c there viper is vascular toxic c snake is myotoxic okay uh, barbiturate that is thiopentone is contraindicated in porphyria because it precipitates the acute attack by increasing the heme production and in acute intermittent porphyria you do not have photosensitivity 
This is pubic symphysis which is a joint in the midline of the body. So it is a secondary cartilaginous joint that means it is a symphysis. When you have a burnt sugar, sugar is syrup, maple syrup urine disease, maple tree has branches. So branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase and the branch chain amino acids are leucine, isoleucine and valine. Then you have von Gerkes which has severe fasting hypoglycemia, xanthomas, lactic acidosis, ketosis, von Gerkes is deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase. Then you have CDP increases in cardiogenic shock because of the back pressure the central venous pressure will increase and neurogenic shock has hypotension and bradycardia not tachycardia it has bradycardia because of parasympathetic tone puti orang is the involvement of the skin skin matlab bahar it is t4b okay it is t4b next one that we have vomiting is uh, metabolic alkalosis the acid going out that is metabolic alkalosis while diarrhea causes nagma that is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis right so yes uh, that was about the today's session here i hope you got to learn out of this we will have the next session tomorrow as well i'll keep updating you on the telegram group for the upcoming sessions so make sure you do not miss out on any of these sessions because we are going to discuss all the high yield topics right so thank you so much everyone for joining in and goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you so much